Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Dan Jurgen. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwing, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me, Tyler, with my co-host James and Jania. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Have you ever just heard two best friends get back together after a long time and chat about life, podcasting, and everything else? Well, you're about to. As I welcome my friend, Chase Smith, college roommate, good friend, and him and I take a trip down memory lane, talk about comics, podcasting, what we love, and leave a whole lot more open for discussion for another time. So... Enjoy this episode of me just chatting about podcasting, comics, the Batman, Batman period, with my good friend, Chase Smith. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Do you like movies? Of course you do. Do you like comic book movies? Of course you do. Well, our Patreon is launched now. It's a dollar a month. That's all we ask. One dollar a month to hear great content. And right now, one of the biggest things we're doing on our Patreon is movie commentaries. I am a movie person, and I love to talk about movies. So what we're doing is at least two movie commentaries a month. You'll hear the wonderful voice of my wife, Jania, more often, and other special shows. Check out our Patreon at kryptonreport.com slash Patreon. And all we ask is, hey, $1. It helps us keep the show on. We're not looking to get rich. We just help with the cost of doing this, and it helps a friend out. You loan a friend a dollar, you probably have a dollar lying around the house and change. So check out patreon.com slash crypto report. Sign up for the $1 a month and send us a message. You can be on the podcast. We can talk about something, anything you want to talk about. You can join us for a movie commentary if you want. So check it out. All right. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It's your host, Tyler. And this week, I'm continuing my Meet the series with a good friend of mine, a fellow podcaster, Mr. Chase Smith. Welcome, Chase. JTP, what's up, my man? Oh, you know, just chilling in the, the new room here and recording some podcasting. Uh, now, Chase and I, yeah, we go back. We went, we went to college together. We used to play some music together. Chase, oh, yeah. this man right here, was the one who gave me um, – I let me borrow and I read The Long Halloween for the first time. Yeah. And Dark Victory. Yeah. I think you let our friend Devin borrow it and then he gave it to me and then you gave me like both books and say, no, I, I, I plowed through those books. Um, Dude, they, but they made it round among the, among the guys' dorms. It oh. did. And, and what's fun is Chase, uh, <laughs> we'll get into everything, but it's crazy. Um, we were actually. <laughs> One of the people that went running into Walmart the day the Dark Knight toys were released to see if we could find the Joker yeah. figure. Yeah. Because it was so, like, supposed to be so hot. And nothing like uh, four grown adults running through a, a Walmart in uh, rural Ohio. Dude, you got you to gotta love it, man. Yeah, those were good times. Those were good times. Uh, it, it, what's crazy now, though, is they're making, like, adult cartoons of all these graphic novels. And so yes. I was uh, – Flying back from Phoenix a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Oh, great! I, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch Hush, which I love I love that that, that graphic novel Hush. I think it's great. Um, and I did, did they change a little bit of what Hush yes. like? The, I was going to yes. say I do not remember Hush being like that. Um, so that was a so, surprise. But uh, the, I haven't watched Long Halloween yet. Um, the thing about Hush that got me. Was so hush. They kind of molded the story a little bit to be in the animation continuity. So a couple of characters were kind of tweaked around. Like okay, so the other the graphic, graphic novel anim- animations, it's all like canon together. So the hush one was because they there's like a whole canon of animated films, and they put hush in there. Um, like in the film, there's Bane in place of Killer Croc. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a couple so, other things um, well, that I were a little different. So. Thomas Elliot is a fantastic character. Like I, I love, I, I love what they did with him. I, I love what he brings to the Batman universe, uh, and I just think there's so much you can do with that. 
Um, and actually, Tyler, we, we have a in development screenplay that we've had for like ten years that focuses around Thomas Elliot a little bit, kind of like a, a story called Batman yeah, Legacy, which um, which is a lot I of fun. It. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll do a whole podcast where we'll just pitch our script because yeah. we actually had a really great idea. In it was great. It was with him and Hugo Strange and it was all this awesome stuff. But anyway, um, uh, but then yeah, in the cartoon, not not to spoil anything, but it's just like Thomas Elliot spoiled. was just like a, a blip and then he was done. And I was like, well, he's coming back and he never did. <laughs> I was like, I what know. the heck? I, like my problem with Hush – was Tom, like you said, Thomas Elliot added some layers to Bruce's past. Yeah. And that, and about, you know, just growing up and Bruce actually being bullied as a child. And then you have this whole storyline that cuts that out. And I mean, I know, okay, like I know Hush's ending is very interesting. And Jeff Loeb does that in his writing where I feel like the endings become a little bit more. Not vague, but like you got to piece it together a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And he did that like in Hush because it's like the Riddler was like the overarching person. Like the Riddler helped manipulate Thomas Elliot and push him into being the man Hush and the bandages and everything. Which what a cool um, visual like for a villain. I mean, especially in comic. It was just it was so cool. And then in the, in the, in the movie, like they just make it straight the Riddler. Um, but not only the Riddler, it's like the super jacked Lazarus Pit Riddler. Yeah, and they there's nothing with Two Face because that was one of the Mister X. Yep, yeah. And so was kind of the Jason and then Todd. Like, but the, yeah, Riddler's Kane also went through the Lazarus Pit, and it's like the super like, <laughs> like powerful. <laughs> it was just like I didn't enjoy that what they did um, because I just I, Hush is so great, and um, yeah. I mean I like the part. I mean I always like the part at the end where. Batman, they find out like Batman has the implant and he has to have mm-hmm. Superman use his heat vision to burn it out of him. Mm-hmm. You have that great visual of Batman's hand kind of shaking yeah. while Superman's, you know, laser focused in. Um, hey, before I know this is DC stuff, uh, I just watched Eternal the other night and they mentioned Batman and Superman and an MCU movie. I heard, I saw the clip. Like, I, I saw the clip. And what's funny is. So Solomon and I are going to see Eternals tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we were supposed to go Sunday, but it was Jenny's like only day off and she just wanted to chill at home. So, uh-huh. but I saw the clip where they mentioned Superman. And what's funny is if you watch, I th- it might be in both versions of justice league, but when the flash is fighting Superman and he goes against the memorial for Metropolis, mm-hmm. his head goes back and the name behind his head is Ben Parker. Oh, wow. So they're always um, shouting each other. Out. Hey, also there's like a sex scene. Like in the movie, so I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I heard that, and my friends want to go to like get some popcorn, use the bathroom right when. Hey, Solomon, what's that over there? Whoa, what, what, what? Ah, uh, ah, it, yeah. it lingers a mo- like I don't know if they've ever done that. I don't know. They it, was have just, it. it was weird. Um, it was so it was one of those when they start like, was like declaring their love for each other, and they're like, oh, they're going to like love each other. Well, they like literally love each other. Like they make love to each other. And this, like, why? this is the edgy MCU. I guess, this is man. The edgy. Um, this is, they're trying to be hardcore now. Not yeah. lo- no longer the empire they built on being a comic book family brand. Yeah. They're like, well, now we're edgy. Um, mm-hmm. It's just funny. But, but, but uh, yeah, also, man. do you remember, do you remember Spider Man uh, with uh, P- uh, Tobey Maguire? Uh-huh. Aunt May's like, you do too much, Peter. You're not Superman, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Good stuff. Oh, and the other thing I was going to tell you, Batman and comics with you, time man. It's been too long. It has been. I think the last time we chatted a little bit about comics was uh, on your podcast. We talked about uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We did. We did. You were with with Damon. That was so. So yeah, I um I do have a podcast. I also have a podcast network, which maybe we can talk about later. But. Yeah, you've been on it a couple times, I think, because we, we talk Star Wars. Um, oh. I know I've, I had the creator of Batman on film, which is a pretty prominent or was a prominent Batman rumor news oh, website, like during the Nolan. Bill? Um, yeah, yeah, Bill yeah, Jerry, yeah, 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 man. Um, had, had, he, uh, I had him on once or twice. I don't remember. I uh, mm-hmm. I've talked to him before, like emails and online and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I knew that like recently during the whole after BVS, he kind of like took a very back seat in yeah. the podcast and everything. And I'm, I'm it's kind of you're starting to hear him contribute again more as he builds up towards the Batman. And Ch- Chase and I were always big, you know, Dark Knight Nolan film buddies. Uh, when I came down to visit him in North Carolina, when I moved down there later, uh, we uh, watched The Dark Knight, of course. Of course. Um, when we roommated together, I was working at Blockbuster. Now, for those who don't know, Blockbuster was a video store. You could rent movies back in the day. And we got, like, the dark night like, a month early. So from, like, I think late October to, like, its release. And then, like, all, I feel like from October to, like, the end of December, that movie was constantly on in the house between yeah. the four roommates and the people that visited. Five. Like, it was always playing <laughs> some. Yeah. I don't know if we count yeah. the basement yeah. dweller. Um, uh, well, well, the one, the only, so that that's a memory. And then we also, I don't know if it was you or one of our other friends from college who worked at Blockbuster, but Garrett. we got the bootlegged Origins X-Men movie unfinished. And I just oh, it was me. It that was, was you. Was we me. all watched yeah. that. I mean... Because we were like, should we go see this? Nah. No, and, and it was... It didn't help an already movie that needed a lot of help. And it yeah. <laughs> kind of was like, eesh. Oh, good times. But what's funny is... So we met after Batman Begins, and then by the time The Dark Knight Rises, I think you had moved to North Carolina. Yeah, it started uh, about to. Yeah, so I'm in full-time ministry, and after uh, college, I was at a church in North Carolina. I was a student, still a student pastor and worship leader. Um, But yeah, I I know my wife and I, because Rises came out, and that's when like the shooting happened. And yeah. So we were in Charlotte at an IMAX theater, and I got an alert on my phone. I remember exactly where we were. Um, that was awful. Um, kind of put well, a damper was, on, on, um, on the night. But What was crazy was Janine and I saw it at a midnight showing, mm-hmm. and I didn't know anything about that shooting until the next mm-hmm. day. Yeah. So, like, it was all like, yeah, that we all could – we actually had our moment of uh, – celebration towards it but yeah we we all that to say we never got to experience one of the movies together right and that's yeah. a shame people did you like rises when i first saw it i did i watched it about a year ago and we're gonna watch it uh for the podcast in january and do okay. a commentary on it um there it are things i rap. like about it gets it. a really bad rap well i mean okay here's a question then is there any trilogy that the third film is good or yeah, great? Indiana like, Jones. Right. I, I, well, right now, Indiana Jones is a quadrilogy because there's four of them. Mm-hmm. There's about to be five. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Star Wars is weird because it's three separate trilogies and spinoffs. But like, you know, if you look at, I mean, it kind of it kind of depends on how you define the film. You know. Um, but if you were looking at the like Indiana Jones, the third one is the best. But the fourth one, I don't know if it's the best. I think it's really good. Um, I think the third one's the best. I'm, I'm I, a it, I mean, for Raiders. Um, but I, 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 okay, yeah. So Rises, man. Uh, I, I think it gets a really bad rap. I think it's so. It's I think one of the bigger scale movies, like that Nolan does in the Bat. I mean, it's bigger scale than Begins, bigger scale than Dark Knight. Um, yeah, and I think it encompasses like the longest amount of time. I mean, begins origins notwithstanding, like begins is almost two separate movies. You have him as a yes. kid going to be a Batman, then you have his like, oh, he's he's a, he's Batman now. Um, and so I think like what it's trying to do, uh, I don't know how he could have done it any better for the story he wanted to tell. Like he knew out of the gate that he, hey, I want to tell this story, and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and uh, I would be interested to know if he had planned on having Joker anywhere in the third one. Um, and so I, that's, I don't remember. I may have known that. There something. was talk, but there was talk um, about it, but, but it was never like. Yeah, it's, it's better than people want to give it credit for. Like Rises, um, you know, Bale delivers. Hathaway's fantastic. Um, Hardy's fantastic. Yeah, Bane. Uh, the set pieces in that is just is just remarkable. Like the, the opening pro, the prologue is 
the airplane. That is a freaking awesome scene, dude. Even, yes, it is. Um, it, it is just incredibly well done. Um, I mean, uh, you know, James, uh, Commissioner Gordon delivers, obviously. Joseph Gordon, like, everyone is just on point. Um, and, yeah, it's just it's, – it's underrated now at this point because it's so, like, oh, that, that one sucks. It's, it's underrated at this point. So if you haven't watched it, check, check it out. My thing with Rice is you got to go into it. And I, I almost wish the name was not – like, I wish it wasn't The Dark Knight Rises, mm-hmm. okay? I wish it was called Legend of the Dark Knight. Because it because at the start of the movie he's kind of this legend, this old hero that people you know, like you you know, he's he's been gone for a while and then he disappears and he becomes, you know, a legend, a folktale. Mm-hmm. And I, it was Nolan's idea of doing like his last Batman. Like yeah. the idea of I'm just gonna I wanna make my trilogy, I don't want anyone to be able to do another one, like this is it. It's closed off. Gary Oldman and, I'm sorry, I forgot <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, you're fine. And so, I mean, he succeeded, you know, in that. And when you look at it, like, this isn't the ongoing adventures of Batman. This Batman has his beginning, yeah. middle, and end. Yeah. Um, you know, The Dark Knight Rises is a nice blend of No Man's Land, Nightfall, storylines, and a little bit of The Dark Knight Returns. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think it's just – when I watched it last time, I, I was like, you know what? There's stuff I like in this. I, I felt like it was a little long. Certain things were a little drawn out. Yeah. And there is a little bit more of suspension of disbelief. One, the whole back issue. Because I've had enough back pains, enough back <laughs> issues, and had to have uh, go to the doctors and have some things taken care of to know that his pop the back is not a cure-all. Two, <laughs> the, the, the nitpicking that cracks me up is that people's like, how do they have cable in that prison? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, um, but my biggest con- like thing is like the back and then like the fact that like, they're like, oh, we can prove fraud on the fingerprints. I would hope so considering his home was burglarized and the stock exchange happened and then this transaction happened. Yeah. So you know what, what I'm, I'm hearing is you wish it was like 50 minutes longer so you could really <laughs> get into <laughs> some of the stuff. That's what you're really saying. Right. Where was the court case? The cutting floor. Where was the court case that showed that he was innocent? You know that he got his money back. Oh, but no, like it, it's it's good. It it works. Um, you know the whole police, you know, being underground for months at a time was. It's an interesting idea of like, how did they? You know, they had to sneak food down to him, or you know what, to keep him yeah. warm, to keep him. But I don't think at you're the same supposed time, to ask a lot of questions when you're watching superhero movies. <laughs> but it's a Nolan film that's supposed to be so grounded in reality. You know, it's like this, sure. is, this is how it is. Yeah. Uh, but. Speaking of so, grounded in reality. Chase watched the first trailer, but he's about to watch live right now the second The Batman trailer. And then we're going to get some feedback from Chase and see what his thoughts are. Since Now, before you do, what was your thoughts on Affleck Batman real quick? Uh, okay. Just in, um, ge- just in general, just in general. You're, this is a safe place, Chase. You, you can speak your truth. I, I felt like, so we watched the Snyder Cut. That was the last time I've seen, uh, you know, I felt like I was watching a Batman who didn't want to be Batman anymore, but who had to because of some code or past failure. And I felt like, I was like I was watching someone who hated their job. That's what I felt like I was watching. Um, mm. That and and I, it was an interesting take. I'd never seen like a kind of older. Ugh, why do I have to do this, Batman? Um, and and I think that was a choice Affleck made. Um, you know, obviously they were really big on like, oh well, you know, he's been through a lot of loss, and you know, this is a weathered Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't mind it. I mean, I generally I like kind of what Affleck does, so I went into it pretty optimistic. Uh, he looked huge. I, I um I didn't see a big difference in like Bruce, his Bruce and Batman. Maybe that was just because I didn't get to see a ton of him as Bruce Wayne in public. Um, yeah, which I enjoyed watching that with. Christian Bale. 
Um, his his Bruce Wayne in public is more in BVS, like the library scene, him at work. Oh, and, and that dance when he meets. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's, that's more right. of his Playboy Bruce. Um, you know, my my the saddest part about his Batman is I really like the idea of getting older Batman to where we're really jumping into the career so that we could, you know, there's all this back history we can explore. If they wanted to pop up like Robin or Nightwing or a Jason Todd story or a Batgirl, like it could have all already happened. We don't have to build to that. Um, See, I I feel like the general populace though, like they're going to be like, wait, there's three Robins. We don't have to do all three. We can just do one, but I'm just saying, like, just the just the fact that we could do that without being anchored to an origin film would be nice for a change. Yeah, see, I think what made it work that little teaser we saw in Batman or Superman or Justice League, or whatever, whichever one that was, is it's like, oh, Batman has a sidekick, and oh, he's dead. Like they don't yeah. know that this isn't the real one. They don't know this is a. Like, they just know, oh, I know that suit. I know his sidekick, and something happened. That's bad. Um, dude, I've, I've watched Batman all like my entire life, starting with the sixties reruns. I have an Adam signed Adam West and Burt Ward picture. Like I've literally watched read every consumed everything. But I mean, I still get confused sometimes about which Robin's which and who's who and <laughs> Red Hood. Like it's just, it's very, very confusing. Um, I made a little, I made a video, a, pl- a, a, uh, a PowerPoint. I'll just send it to you. Yes, or you can ask my kids. They'll flat out tell you. They'll <laughs> they tell you, like, well, send me that PowerPoint. Um, oh, they straight out called Grandma. I was like, that's Jason Todd. Oh, my gosh. And that's Tim Drake. And I would look at my kids like, I'm so proud. Well, yes, yeah, send me I'm that so, PowerPoint. So I mean, so, like, I think, yes, jumping into that. But, you know, I think this is kind of what Marvel's getting into is at some point you just, like, like where's the threshold of, like, what the audience can retain and what mm-hmm. they're willing to go there with. Um so, so yeah, I don't mind not being like, whoa, why are there, why is this Robin? Why is that Rob? Like, I don't know. I think, I think it can be a lot. Um, but also, I don't know. Go for it's just, it. <laughs> you know, the, the thing is like, we had the grounded Batman. Then we had like the Batman who is part of like the Justice League and the other DC world. And now we're swinging back to. A grounded Batman. So Chase, go ahead and press play. Let's do it. So hey. we did there. <laughs> and uh, let's see what you think about this trailer. And we'll, we'll talk a little and then we'll get into you as a podcaster. All right. So here we go. And press and play on the trailer that was released three weeks ago. The Batman. Raining, of course, in Gotham. Shadows. Music drop. That's all it does in Gotham. Please. Hands up. Okay. Hands up. Oh, is that the Riddler? It looked like the guy's playing the Riddler. Yes. Question mark. Love it. Fear is a tool. When that light hits the sky, it's bad boy. It's not just a call. It's a warning. Shock someone? shooting for his <laughs> okay Batmobile he's dirty serial killer yo Yeah. 
that thing is wide. Upside down, brother. That's an awesome shot. Okay, that's a cool shot. Epic music. I want to hear a little more Elfman callback in that, though. Um, okay, dude, that was that was a thing. So here's why you process this. This is my thought process with this movie. Okay. I feel like they sat down on it with a giant whiteboard and they went and they watched Batman 89 and <laughs> took notes. And then they watched The Dark Knight and took notes. And then they watched Affleck and took notes and they put them all in a blender. And they're like, we're going to make a greatest hits Batman. And then they we're watched gonna... Saw and they made the regular like this like murderous puzzle machine. I mean, it, he's been oh, like Tom Christ King's Riddler was. Oh my gosh, that, that was not a plug. It just re, it started. Oh playing. no! Oh no! Uh, <laughs> but no, like so. Sorry, it you know, automatically started playing. I didn't pause yeah. it. Um, I feel like it's going to be like a greatest hits Batman. Like you know, by going back to what I said, like it looks good. I'm, I mean, I'm not against it. It looks good. Um, I'm excited for the music, the Gotham, the characters. Mm -hmm. Um, my only reserve is just like, once again, we're, you know, this is year two Batman. Um, so it's not Batman begins, but it's more like kind of like 89 where he's been doing this, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how I feel about just having to keep going back to the beginning of Batman's career. I want to yeah. see, I mean, it's like the Spider-Man paradox where we're, are we going to see his parents murdered again? Like, is, is that really going to be a flashback and or like, is that, is that going to happen? Probably. I mean, or at least something we're going to see a grave site or hear gunshots. Like, can't we'll, not we'll like, start a fresh Batman and not talk about why he's Batman. Right. I mean, I mean, I, it's about, it's all about, I mean, I mean, heck they even put the Wayne murder in Joker. Why? <laughs> you know, like why? Um, That's a whole other conversation. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So, okay. Um, just your, what are your, a lot, of, a lot of people in the movie, you got James Gordon, who is played uh, by um, Jeffrey Wright? Jeffrey Wright, that's right. Sorry. Um, uh, looks looks great. Love it. Love it. We have Alfred um, by the legend himself. Uh, the like the, the not not the green screen legend, um, but no cap legend. Uh, yeah, yeah, the motion cap um, legend. Uh, S Sidaris, right? I'm terrible. Andy Circus. Andy Circus. That's right. <laughs> you imagine the uh, like female comedian uh, Amy Sedaris doing that? That'd be really, really dumb. <laughs> um, I, every time we talk about somebody, if I've never heard their name pronounced out loud, I'm like, if I butcher this, please forgive me, people. No, yeah. Um. Oh my gosh, yeah. And Colin Farrell, obviously, as as the Penguin, is just. I mean, I I think he's he stole the trailer there. In my opinion. Dude, the first trailer, like where you see him, but he has no lines. You just see his face and you don't mm -hmm. know who it is. Yeah. And then when someone points out, like, that's Colin Farrell and makeup for Penguin. Yeah. I'm like, holy I mean, that cow. trailer showed off Colin Farrell and, and Zoe Kravitz as the Catwoman. I mean, that, that's what I feel like that one was. Um, I mean, you heard his vo bat voice for the first time, I think, maybe? Yeah. Um, mm. you, in the first trailer, he says, I'm vengeance. So his 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 bat voice seems to be like it's gonna be kind of more in the Michael Keaton uh -huh. style, where it's just kind of lowering your voice, not trying to <laughs> chew gravel or not using a modulator. Yeah, I, I, I always like the mod with bat flick. I thought that was actually a, a good touch because why wouldn't you do that? Right, because for two things: one, it makes your voice sound creepy, weird. Yeah. When you're talking, two, as an actor, that's done in post. So, oh, you, yeah, just, you, know. <laughs> you, you know, like you just act, you deliver your lines uh -huh. and then in post, they put the modulator on and give it that deep growl compared to like all the fun lines that we have to play with, you know, in Christian Bale. It's one thing when he says like one line, like swear to me, you know, and then yeah. compared to later when he has to deliver long lines of dialogue and he yeah. can't breathe through his nose and he's like, ah, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> So no, I, I, I did not like – I didn't like the Batman interrogating the Riddler scene punching the window. 
that's just if I if I saw in the dark night and beat the crap out of the Joker, like I don't want to see him punch a glass. Like Well, go I, back and watch the first trailer when he's when the, he's fighting a room full of police and they're all like coming on him and he's like throwing them off and Okay, yeah, but that's not one of his rogue gallery people. No, but I'm just I'm just like I said, like I'm telling you. It's maybe like they're, they're paying homage. Great. Maybe maybe they're paying homage. It's um, it's a greatest hits Batman, man. They're like, yeah. oh, remember this scene? We're going to do it. I mean, yeah, I felt like they had were that. very intentional in having like, he has black under his mask. Like that one scene, because um, that, that's been a source of a contention in fanboys. Um, but I mean, yeah, obviously I'm going to go see it. Uh, maybe we'll go together. Maybe we are. Maybe kind this of will be the in Ohio. We are within like twenty minutes of each other. Twenty to three minutes. Yeah, I uh, I like I like a young Alfred. I'm, I'm going to like this younger kind of spry Alfred. I love Alfred's origins. Who's like the Green Beret, kind of like all this like his like dude. Alfred's pretty pretty hardcore. Um, and uh, I, I would love a little younger kind of like hey I'm like I, I'm going to help you out, Alfred. I know he does in all of his different ways, but. Don't mess with Alfred, man. Alfred will mess you up. Um, and so, I like Alfred being like 20, 20 years from Bruce. Um, yeah. Kind of thing. Like, you know, or, dude, why years. can't they grow up together? It's not like the Pennyworths like just got the job. Like, why can't his that just make a family thing? And Bruce well, had Alfred as a friend growing up. I mean, there. Where is it? In the comics, I'm trying to remember whose run it was. Was um, maybe it was. Scott Snyder, I can't remember where Jarvis Pennyworth was the butler, who's Alfred's dad. Sure, yes. And then when when he died, Alfred, like the idea was, Alfred was raised in that idea of servitude to be a butler. He went off to the military, yep. did his career. When his father died, Alfred came back, yeah, to take his father's place and had that training. Yep. And then, um. So I always kind of like that idea. Like it was a the Pennyworth like family was. They lived at the manor. They had their own yeah. like Pennyworth house in the back. Um, but Bruce and Alfred knew each other. They were friends. They played. They if played good guys, that, bad guys, or whatever you know, whatever they whatever you yeah. wanted to do. Like I can see all the panels now. I can see the the our, our Batman legacy taking shape. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was about to say if we did that, like you can compress the age to maybe like ten year gap. Like so that Alfred's a but, little bit older. But why do they have to be older? It, but why? I don't know because they're just because – I don't know. I'll roll with it because I like the idea of Alfred being someone he looks up to, like that's a little bit more of a father figure. But like it's kind of like that whole Obi-Wan Anakin thing. Yeah. Like – But I just – You know, my, yeah. I've always said like Obi-Wan looked at Qui-Gon as like a master, like a fa- like a mentor, father-esque figure. Yeah. But Obi-Wan looked at Anakin as a brother. And that was the difference between their their mentor mentee relationship. Yeah, is they had more of a brother relationship yeah. than the mentor mentee. And then Anakin looked at Obi Wan like almost like a father figure because Anakin was always trying to replace yeah uh, his absentee father. That's right. We're gonna go down the Star Wars. Chase Smith. I'm just gonna say this has the most ba idea for a Star Wars battle, and I'm not gonna say on the podcast because I don't want no one to steal it. If anyone's going to steal the idea, I'm going to steal it well, now I'm <laughs> and give him credit. <laughs> <laughs> you and I were talking about what we – back – I think it was after – it oh. was after Last Jedi. We were talking about like what could be an awesome lightsaber battle. Bro, and I'm drawing a blank, man. Just get it's it okay. out I'm there, man. Just get it our, out there. No, nah, no. Nah, I don't want everyone it's to Is that know. good? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If I can spell. <laughs> Dude, I completely uh, – oh, I, I did have a story I was um, working on about uh, – this was in 2000 and, uh, 2009. I had this idea of Yoda's race, um, Yoda and his brother finding the, f- like, force in some cave. And, uh, like, I had this whole, like, outline written out where Yoda and his brother, um, they, like – work with the force and like this was like thousands and thousands of years ago or whatever. Um, and obviously Yoda his <laughs> like, it, it became like a Cain and Abel thing. Yoda ended up killing his brother. Um, and like Yoda was the cause of like the dark side of the force. And that's like, it, it was this really, really cool thing. And then 
baby group came, which was cool. Um, I like this, but yeah, it, it was a really cool, like kind of force origin thing and, and how Yoda carries around all this guilt and, um, everything comes from essentially him. I don't, you know, I didn't know anything about new canon. It was just, Oh, let's explore Yoda a little bit. Yeah, dude. I totally think that's a great idea, especially because Yoda's always been painted such like a benevolent being. Yeah. What happened if he didn't start that way? He right. started out kind of on the bad side and had to earn his benevolence. Something like that. Well, dude, Copyright I can't wait to hear my myself. awesome idea about a lightsaber battle. <laughs> I just sent it to you in the chat. In the chat. Oh. <laughs> I forget. Okay, I see that. That sounds cool. I don't remember what that was about, and I'm so sorry, Tyler. Oh, it's okay. All you need to know is that. And we'll leave it there. Okay. Anyone who's interested can message us, and we won't tell you what it is. That so, has never but, been done. Nope. And then Not we have, in we that have fashion. The, there's been, like, can I just yeah. say it? You don't want me to. Fine. It's your podcast. I won't. No, I, won't. I don't care. I don't think Chase there's... Because our idea, okay, we'll throw it out there, was well, a no, Mexican no, no, standoff. No, 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 no. All right, go ahead. No, it's a Mexican standoff. And we had the idea of it kind of being like we were talking, we were spitballing, you know, because we had just we were talking after Last Jedi was about like Kylo Ren and like Ray. Oh yeah, and Leia. it was the three of them kind of battling, and Luke. it was like. And then we talked about like, oh, what if it was like Kylo Ren, his mom, and Snoke? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we had this idea of like, you know, this being this like three way battle where it is like a Mexican standoff where. It's not like two versus one, which we've seen. Right. But it's one versus one versus one, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was. It's pre- it would be pretty awesome. I think you could still do that with, you know, the Ahsoka show or the Kenobi. Dude, I love The Last Jedi, and I like Loriza Skywalker. I don't care. I like I like them. I like them. Uh, my Okay, my issue with The Last Jedi is – the Poe and Finn storylines really have nothing going on. They just feels like after that opening battle, it feels like filler to the end. It's all. The, I, I disagree with that. I think it's all character development. Like what? Like Poe is so like heroic and hardcore in Force Awakens. Like he's, and then to see that fall in the second one, him stripped of his responsibility and his like leadership and his pull within the Resistance. Like I thought it was great. It's a lesson he has to learn and. And, and Finn's, I, like, world, like, expansion and to see, uh, like, good in everything and every creature. Like, it was just – I think it was all character development. It's not it's not Rian, Rian Johnson's fault that they did nothing with it in the, in the third one. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. And wrecked um, on everything. Um, I just feel like you, you could have – you wasted time with the Canto Bite stuff. When oh, that was more. awesome, bro. I would have liked it more if it was Finn and Rose – on board the ship, like diving Phasma, fighting Phasma, and they made Phasma something because that was a character that really had nothing. Yeah. And then Rise, Rise of Skywalker, for the most part, I liked everything in it, uh, except I still didn't like that Palpatine came back. Yeah. Yeah, that um, was if weird. They, um, if they hadn't, or if the idea was that they could resurrect Palpatine. Yeah. Look, you know and, what I'm saying? Like he had a force ghost, but like him physically being back, I felt like just kind of negated re- Return of the Jedi. And yeah, here's so. why I, I put the third trilogy over the first trilogy, like the one, two, three. I think seven, eight, nine is better than one, two, three because of this reason. It's a story about friendship and loyalty. And you look at Han, Luke, and Leia, and Chewie, and and the original trilogy. And it's a story about they stick by each other through everything. Han's coming back or Luke's going to go rescue him in Cloud City. I don't care. I shouldn't go. Hey, th- those are my peeps. I'm going to go. Return of the Jedi yeah. uh, is this culmination of friendship. And that's what Rise of Skywalker is. They all like stick together. Rey sticks by Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren comes back and saves Rey. It's just that they're all together. And, and I, I just – it was such a feel-good – they're doing this together. I They, they captured yeah. that spirit of, of, of the original trilogy – like to a T. Um, I don't like some of the choices they made, but it was still a ton of fun. Um, I loved, I mean, Kylo Ren's probably the best character in the new trilogy. Um, I have a yes. couple issues with Ray. 
Um, not that she's uh, a woman. I think that's incredible. Um, I don't think she has a character I hate that she. I hate that she was a Palpatine. Uh, I don't think she had, she had a, a a character flaw. Um, yeah, she she didn't, and I which, hate that she's a Palpatine um, because I think she should have really been a, a lot Jedi. Of what she had, um, um, but yeah, I, dude, it's Star Wars on screen. I'm going to like it. Um, yeah, but do you know, I mean, I I, I agree. Um, I always rewatch Star Wars movies in December, like leading up to Christmas. They're like part of my like into Christmas. Um, yeah. Like right after Thanksgiving, because like you're starting to get into December before it's mm-hmm. like it's too early to start playing Christmas movies. That's when I slide in the Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm looking. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going back to the Batman trailer here. I'm looking at the IMDb. Oh, no. Dude, Carmine Falcone's in this one. Yep. Nice. John Tutorio. So, the, what's the? Pl- have they released like the plot? Nope, not really. We and just the know that year, Batman terrorizing. uncovers corruption in Gotham City that connects his. To his own family while facing a serial a serial killer known as the Riddler. Okay, ooh, so maybe the Wayne the Waynes aren't as squeaky clean as everyone thinks. I would recommend as we transition here uh, to the Chase and Tyler talk about Star Wars Forever podcast. <laughs> that um, really, really would go on forever. It would be awesome. Uh, you know, it would be fun. We'll just be to sit down and watch like each movie and make a commentary you and me and just like go back and forth about what we like, what we don't like. Um, because it would be fun because, you know, I gotta ask you these couple quick questions and we'll move on. Did you think that the new trilogy was going to be about Luke? Like when they first announced they were going to do seven, eight, nine, were you like, Oh, it's going to be Luke Skywalker, like as the hero and like, was going to be all about him and Leia and Han continuing. Uh, when I first heard they were doing a trilogy, I wanted to see Luke in a mentor setting with new people. Um, when I found out, what I found out in The Last Jedi made me really excited for what was going to happen. Like, I, I loved seeing, like, oh, he tried, and oh, he failed, and oh, he had this. Um, I wish they didn't waste a whole movie fan service sync people who just wanted to watch the same like a, a recycled star wars movie i wish they would have just been bold and shown and made that an entire movie and set that as the backdrop for oh hey here's ray and oh hey here's finn and oh like keep those characters but i why if you have an incredible story do you not tell that you wait for right. and, and and who knows what plan disney had um there- I mean, like, I've heard so is, many stories. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, they had, people, when you hear, oh, they're making seven, eight, nine. And I think one question was where the evil going to come from? Like they, they win. Like, yeah. W- so where's that going to come from? And what happens to Luke, Han, and Leia? You know, my it. thought is, uh, my thought is like, it's gen- every movie's generational. So the first yeah. is about Anakin. And then the second's about his kids. So the next trilogy would be about his kids' kids. You know, it's like the Skywalker family. That's the saga. Yeah. You know, it started with Anakin and it ended with Ben Solo, who was the last of the Skywalker bloodline. So, you know, in the saga, the Skywalkers are done. Yeah. Um, you know, their bloodline has, and, you know, there, I think there's a lot more they could have done with the idea of what the Skywalker bloodline meant to the Force. Um, that's where I feel like they messed up with Ray being a Palpatine and she just made her, um, she should have been like the new chosen one. She should have been created by the force. Yeah. Just, um, but I, I don't know. I just never thought they would continue with Luke Han and Leia. Cause I feel like their stories were told like for the saga that it would be the next generation story to be told. Um, well, I think, I mean, dude, obviously like Han and Leia's kids is a story that there is right. like other books with like incredible stories. Luke, in the jet, like I think there were stories there. It's just a matter of like they it's wanted a- to go in a different direction. I wish they would have killed Chewbacca in Rise. I thought like I was so pumped when that ship was destroyed. Like that was incredible. And then to pull the rug out from everyone and say, "Oh, psych, it was another ship." Like that was a, a poor decision um, that I did not appreciate. <laughs> You know, I mean, the first movie is like Han. Han dies. The second movie's Luke's. He dies. The third movie, 
is Leia's and she dies. Um, you know, but it, it, it is what it is. I mean, we knew that there was supposedly a script for eight or sorry. Yeah. Eight and nine. And then when they hired Ryan Johnson, they just tossed him out and let him write his own eight. So whatever. I mean, it is what it is. And you know, the you don't thing like is, the last Jedi, do you? No, I, I, I don't mind it at all. Okay. Because I, I love the Kylo Ren, Ray, and Snoke stuff. I love that part. I love that Luke was a failure. I, I did not, ex- I did not expect him to do jack crap. I liked, I liked the idea that Luke was in hiding that he had failed because he never really succeeded in the first place. He didn't stop the emperor. The only thing that stopped the emperor was his father's love for Luke him that turned his father and not going to the dark side. That was his victory. That was his victory. That was his only victory. It was and Anakin he, Skywalker. He who, the Death Star. And the, yeah, we're That's talking about the victory. Jedi way. I'm not talking about the first movie. Okay. <laughs> yes. He, he destroyed the Death Star, but I'm talking about like his Jedi training path. Like, you know, he didn't destroy the emperor. You know, he didn't stop. Okay, here's his victories. He didn't kill his dad, which is what the Emperor wanted, and he didn't turn to the dark side. And because of that, the Emperor was defeated, and Darth Vader came back to the light and threw Emperor over the ledge into a pit of electricity, and then it exploded, and then he survived. So, <laughs> Okay, here's, here's my question to you. Who defeated Darth Vader? Uh, Luke. No, Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, that, that sounds like a Tyler answer. Dude, Luke because, defeated Darth hey, Vader. Hey. <laughs> no, Luke took Vader down, but then Vader was officially destroyed when Anakin Skywalker's love for his son yeah. overtook him and he turned back to the light. Because remember, he ceased to be Anakin Skywalker and became Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. So in reverse, in, in Return of the Jedi, he ceased to be Darth Vader and returned to be Anakin Skywalker. And then he died. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's our Star Wars segment. Um, but Chase, come on, man. Let's talk a little bit about you. Like you have your own podcasting network. Tell us a little bit because Chase, you started actually podcasting before I even started podcasting because uh, you did the Dog Talk podcast and we did a whole movie episode. Dude, oh, yeah. man. So and, I've been involved in podcasting since 2006. I was at Marshall. Um, and just automatically loved them. Um, and being in audio with my job at churches and working with live audio, it wasn't a very hard transition to learn how to do that or to figure it out. Um, and so before I got married, I was like, man, I got five, six months to kill. What, uh, what can I do to spend some time? And I was like, I can start a podcast. And it was called Dog Talk. And I talked about the Cleveland Browns. I love the Cleveland Browns. But I also talked about whatever I wanted to. Movies, uh, talked to my friends. And uh, ended up making on the new and noteworthy part on on iTunes, which was really really cool. Um, but then we got I got married. I was like, hey, that was fun. That was great. Um, still listen to podcasts all the time. And then I ended up. So whenever you work in the church and you are young and you work with students and you sing, you automatically get dumped a lot of like technology like projects or things at churches. And so like, oh Chase, put our stuff online. Oh Chase, hey. Do this. Hey, can you make our sermons available? Hey, we don't want to record sermons on a on a cassette tape anymore. Can you figure out how to do that without doing that? Um, and so it was, I was doing podcasts for churches and then some other businesses were like, hey, can you help me do this? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I was like, well, wait, why am I doing this for things that I don't really care about when I can do something for me that I do care about? And You're not passionate about it. You want to do something you're passionate about. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll start. I, we understand the, the passion here. Yeah, so in 2017, I started the Chase Smith podcast um, and uh, loved it. I ended up talking to a prominent Browns person and we started a Browns podcast and that topped charts on iTunes. Um, and then I launched a Cavs podcast and a handful of others. And I was like, well, hey, this seems to work well. Why don't I just do this? Put them all together under one umbrella. And um Thus, the Press Play Podcast Network was born, and we just celebrated three years uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. We uh, have four or five producers, junior-level staff, an executive team. We have investors, and we just launched our Phase 2 seed funding campaign, um, looking to bring on more investors and more money, trying to raise some capital. So if you guys 
know of anyone looking to invest in an, a growing Midwest podcast network um, that covers everything from sports to culture um, to business, uh, let me know. And All right. so, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. I uh, host our Cavs podcast every other week, um, and I'm going to be relaunching my podcast here um, more consistently in the new year. Um, I have been, I've given up a lot of my hosting duties. We brought on more hosts just so I can focus more on network expansion and other things. And it's, Ty, it's a humbling lesson to, um, kind of, uh, step down and bring other people on and to see it do better than whenever you were doing it. Um, and, uh, to kind of like give up ownership of what you do. And I found that the more I give up, the more that this grows and the better it becomes, um, which is a hard lesson because I, I like to do things. And, um, but it, it's, it's been an incredible journey, man. The family's super supportive. Um, and we'll just see, see where this goes, man. So yeah, pressplaypodcast.com. Go to any Spotify, Apple, search my name or press play podcast. And you'll see all of our shows come up. Um, it's kind of where we're at. We went to, um, podcast movement in nashville over the summer which is cool nice yeah man um which is a big podcast yeah. conference every year um, i'd like to go to a podcasting conference it was at cool some man. point yeah it was a lot well, of good I'm information always learning yep always learning new things with the podcast yeah bro so that's that that is chase obviously as you can hear the man he has a lot of experience, lots of cool stuff to talk about. You can talk about anything with Chase. Oh. I, think, I think next we're going to start our own cooking podcast. Hey, hey man. It's going to be I called can... Don't Throw. Hey, it'll be called Don't Throw Burnt Microwavable Popcorn in the, in freezer. the freezer. Correct. Don't do that. Because it'll make the ice taste like burnt popcorn. We yeah, that, that that, 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 that's my bad. Um, <laughs> Ty has never let, <laughs> let me forget that. <laughs> you because make it was mistake. hilarious. <laughs> because it was hilarious i still think it's hilarious it was so hot though and oh i, I know i don't blame you i, just I didn't trust when we had the ice what the house was made of who knows what would have happened if burnt <laughs> popcorn would have touched the floor <laughs> the whole thing would have gone up as smoke. it's like just put it in the freezer but yeah that that was a bad smell that just never left that fridge probably still smells like burnt popcorn i'm pretty sure um dude that house man Man, so we were seniors in college, and there were five of us. My room wasn't even a room. It was like a dining room. We put up a thick cloth. I put like a wardrobe in front of like the entryway door, and um, that's where I slept. We had this huge William Shakespeare like wooden <laughs> like cloth. I don't even know what it was uh, over on our Tap mantel tapestry. tapestry. It really was a tapestry. Yeah. Ty lived upstairs. You had two rooms. It, you had like your own it, like entertainment room and then your bedroom slash band practice room. It doubled as but, but, that. But hold on. Look, for everyone who's thinking, oh, that's cool. The front room was about the size of a jail cell. <laughs> yes. Um, the, the, the roof was slanted. Yeah. And then when you went into like the sleeping area, it was long. It was an attic with slanted yeah. roofs like this. And, and I was the tallest one there. You really were. <laughs> so you had I had to watch – yeah, my we, head. We ended up putting someone in your entertainment room who slept there. Um, we yeah. had someone who was in our primary bedroom. The house had one bathroom, mind you. <laughs> um, a very small one bathroom. One small bathroom. Um, someone in the primary – the biggest room in the house was the smallest guy in the house. Um, <laughs> and uh, he had like two closets as well, which I didn't have a closet either. That's a whole other conversation. We had someone living – we had someone living in our sunroom. Yes, who also he didn't just, have a closet, but he had one of those portable. You you walk from the jail cell living room to our kitchen. Um, my closet was the pantry. <laughs> yeah, and uh, down from the kitchen was the sunroom that led out to the backyard. Someone like lived there. They had this. Uh, well, no, they didn't live there. They slept there. They slept there. Because correct. Because he, he was about to get married. And he just needed somewhere to sleep yes. at night. So he would come. He was the best roommate ever. He really was. You never knew he was there. Yeah. He always paid his part of the bills. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, that's where the laundry was as well. But then downstairs was was the biggest room in the house. But that's where our basement dweller lived. And he, like, erected walls. Like, he was pretty much just, like, playing real-world Minecraft downstairs. <laughs> 
<laughs> he put in a sink. Uh, uh, we we could do a whole podcast on him. <laughs> oh man, he uh, we found just like jars of of piss down there. Um, what? Because whenever he moved out, he didn't take anything. He was just like, I have what I need. Whatever's down there, I'm just going to forget. And it was a wreck. Um, but hey, we had five guys in there. It was good. It's good stuff. It was fun. good times. Never again, but good times. Yeah, never again. I have kids now. I have my own house. Okay, I have my Superman room. I can't. I can't. Dude, hey, do, look, there's one of my kids who's supposed to be in bed because they have school in the morning. But you know, he's he's Roll up. Babe, hey, what's up, bro? Friend Chase, you need to be. You need to go lay down. Go, go to bed. Solomon, you have school in the morning. If you want to go to the movies tomorrow, I could never. I could. I mean, if we weren't podcasting. I was just, you know, breeding. They'd be asleep. But no, because we're on a podcast, they're like. Has he ever been on a podcast and recorded something with you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The intro is his voice. Sayla has the outro. And then we do little segments together. I'll have them comment on stuff. And it's all good fun. Cool. Well, dude, this I was am. all good fun, man. Always a pleasure talking to you, my man. Oh, yeah. That's why I was like, I told Janine, I was like, I'm doing a podcast tonight. She's like, oh. It's like, yeah, I'm just talking with Chase Smith. She's like, oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior's talk. awesome, dude. You're awesome. I love you guys, man. We're a wonderful family, and uh, let's definitely go watch Batman together. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious because uh, I want to see it before Solomon does because you know he wants to see. It. He's watched all the Nolan films with me. Wow. He, you know he gets a little bored at times, but he's watched them all, and he's really hyped on the trailer for this. So I want to see it before I take him. So me and you yeah, go and catch call. it. And let's then... do it. All right, buddy. Let's do it. Where can people find you online? Besides, uh, are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Yeah, Twitter Twitter's. and Instagram at the Chase Smith, and then um, pressplaypodcast dot com for all of our shows. And uh, hey, and remember. Look up in the sky. The Krypton Report is a Tears production. We thank you for listening and enjoying, and please support us on our Patreon account, our T Public Store. And check out our social media. Always remember to look up in the sky.